Okay, so I want to continue uh, talking about splitting patterns and how we can use it to look at our molecules. So let's take a look at this molecule. Here we have propyl bromide. Uh, now it's convenient actually, I like that this is drawn in such a way that the most electronegative portion of the molecule, that is the portion with the bromine, is on the left. And the reason is because we expect to see these protons, which are directly attached, we expect them to be furthest downfield. Right there. The next set of protons are the next closest to that electronegative group. They're right here. And finally, our third set of protons, we expect to be furthest upfield, we expect it to be right there. So let's take a look and see if this is the case. This does integrate for three. This one integrates for two. And this one integrates for two. So we do get the expected pattern that we would see. Let's take a look at the splitting then. So our uh, peak that's furthest upfield right here is a CH3 group next to a CH2 group. We expect to see a uh, triplet. That integrates for 3. This integrates for 3. Here it is here. And it is a nice triplet. Let's expand it. We see it's a triplet. Let's take a look at this molecule. So our CH2 group, which is next to another CH2 group, we expect it to be a triplet as well. I don't know if you can see this in yellow. Uh, barely, but I have some colorblind problems. So maybe you can see it. It's this peak right here. And if we were to expand it, we would see that that, that is a triplet and it integrates for two. What about down here? What about this one right in the middle? Okay. Put my arrow way up here. CH2 group. And it's next to a CH3 group, which is fairly uh, far away from the electronegative group. It's attached to another carbon, which has two hydrogens on it, the CH2, and it's very close to that electronegative group. So we might expect this to be a complex splitting pattern. But when we look over here, we see that this peak actually has one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like a sextet. Why is that a sextet? As it turns out, the coupling constant with the protons, let me get my laser, the coupling content, con coupling constant between those protons and this methyl group is pretty close to the coupling constant between those protons and this methylene group uh, that I have circled there now. Uh, so, Instead of, we have five, this should be, this should be sextet, by the way, right there. Uh, but we have n equals five in this case. It's easy to see why n equals two here and why n equals two here. This n equals five because those two Coupling constants close enough that we get simple coupling and we see a nice pattern. So uh, your N may be simple uh, if the coupling constants are close. And this is, uh, as it turns out, this is the case. So we see a nice triplet, sextet, and another triplet. But coupling is not always well behaved. If we take a look at this molecule, we have uh, three different sets of protons. The, one on, the ones on each end 
uh, are coupling with this one in the middle, this one B, okay? Uh, we see a nice doublet due to the proton C. We see another nice doublet due to the protons uh, A. Notice that the coupling constants are different. So in this case, uh, this is due to J, I'm going to call it BC, and this one is due to J, B, A, and J, B, C is not equal to J, B, A. Because of that, we see this complex splitting pattern here, which is hard to decipher. Now, you can actually do simulations with modern NMR spectrometers, uh, and you can vary the coupling constants until you get a pattern that makes sense, and that's tells us what the coupling constants are. So we see in this case that uh, J12 equals 3.8 hertz and J23 equals 6.6 .6 hertz. That corresponds to uh, my JBC and JBA. We can also have instances where we get some nice looking patterns but our coupling constants are very different. Now, this one was complex because although they weren't equal, they were close. If they're very far apart, we get some nice patterns as well. So in this particular instance, what we're seeing, look at this, we're seeing a quartet of triplets. And that's because JAB is much larger than JBC. So JAB is responsible for uh, this signal being split into a quartet and J B C is responsible for the signal being split into a triplet. So we see a nice quartet of triplets because the larger coupling constant spreads them out and the smaller coupling constant splits each of those individuals ones. If we were to reverse that Instead of seeing a quartet of triplets, we now are just going to change the direction so that JAB is now much smaller than JBC, and we see a nice triplet of quartets. So we see a quartet of triplets versus a triplet of quartets. When JAB is very, very close to JBC, we see simple coupling when we have a low field magnet and we see the coupling get a little bit more complex when we increase the strength of our magnet and go to a higher field instrument. That's because we're starting to get a better resolution and in fact we're starting to notice that JAB and JBC are not equal. When we have a low resolution instrument we can't refine that and JAB are roughly equal to JBC, and we see nice simple splitting. Uh, with a higher field instrument, we see more complicated splitting. So as I've already said, we're uh, going to uh, mostly be looking at simple coupling when we do problems. We're not going to be uh, getting into looking at complex uh, coupling. So I'm going to leave this for right now. Let's uh, take a look at non-equivalent coupling uh, in a case where we have uh, a big coupling constant and a small coupling constant. In this particular molecule, we have three signals. Uh, we have HA, HB, and HC. Uh, what we see is a nice, simple signal over here. That's due to this coupling. This is due to this proton right here, HC, okay? And it's coupling with B uh, with a coupling constant of 8 hertz. Over here, we see nice simply coupling. This is due to proton A, and it seems to be coupling with something. It's probably coupling with B because it's the closest one, two, three, four bonds away. So this is an instance where we see four bond coupling.
it's quite small. If we were to get to C, one, two, three, four, five, it's five bonds away, too far away. The coupling constant is much too small to be resolved. Uh, so we see this instance of the large coupling constant and the small. And over here, JBC, we have, uh, remember, it's coupled with uh, molecule C, and it also couples with, I'm sorry, not molecule C, but protons C and protons A. So we see a nice doublet of doublets. We can do our splitting patterns and see why we see this nice simple pattern when JAB equals JBC. We can use our splitting trees. We can split J into AB and then we split it, JBC, and that's going to be a quartet. Notice now that these overlap as we split these through and we see a nice pentet because of the overlap. If they're not equal, it can get very complex uh, and we can actually see that this is a doublet of quartets, but it's kind of complicated. Uh, and in fact, we, we can do this analysis. We're not gonna do this in this course. Uh, but just so you know that you can take a look at these more complex coupling patterns, splitting patterns, and uh, get some information out of them. The coupling constants, by the way, are, are quite uh, diagnostic. So here's a nice challenging little problem. Uh, I've given you the molecule, but let's analyze it and let's take a look at these peaks. So let's take a look at what we expect. So I'm going to put a little yellow dot there. We have a CH3 group there. It's an isolated CH3 group, and we expect it to be a singlet. Uh, you don't know this, but I do. It's gonna be somewhere just past two because uh, it's uh, a CH3 group that's attached to a carbonyl, uh, and quite often those come very close to 2.1. We expect the same thing over here. So we expect to see a singlet uh, somewhere near 2.1. And if we look at the 2.1 region, let's expand it, we do see two signals. Now we might think that's a doublet, but it's not. It's actually two singlets that happen to come very close together. So let's take a look. What do we expect now? For this one, this is also a CH3 group. And if we look at the carbon next to it, it's a CH group, okay? So we expect this thing to be a doublet. We probably expect this thing to be the furthest upfield because it's not attached to electronegative group, although it's, it's close, but it's fairly far away. Uh, and if we take a look out here At 1.40, we see a nice uh, doublet. Now, what's interesting is if you take a look here, you can see uh, that this doublet, the signals are actually further apart than these two singlets. So it gets confusing, right? We may have mistakenly thought these were both doublets. And then finally, uh, this we expect to be a quartet uh, with the same coupling constant as the doublet over here and this is what we see over here so this is a slightly challenging problem although we can sort it out once we know the structure uh, it's going to take a little bit of practice and experience to go the other way so if we were given this problem without the structure uh, perhaps we were given uh, the molecular formula uh, we could probably figure this out, but it, it's going to be challenging. So, here we go. This is a little bit simpler. Uh, the four times
types of information we get from NMR. The number of signals tells us how many different sets of protons we have. The chemical shift tells us the types of protons we have. The integration tells us the relative amounts of protons we have. And the splitting tells about protons on neighboring atoms. So keep this in mind when you're looking at NMR spectrum that there's four types of information and uh, go through it stepwise. The first thing to see is how many signals we have. Uh, the chemical shift will tell us the types of signals and if we have a molecular formula we can have some idea. Uh, the integration tells us the relative amounts of protons uh, and the splitting tells us what's on the neighboring protons. So that's it for now. Uh, I'll make another uh, recording soon uh, where we'll do some actual analysis of molecules. Uh, and then we'll take a look at C13 NMR. So probably two more videos, although if they get too long, I like to split them up as I did with today's lecture.